Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So the last time that I posted a Dirty 30, a She-Hulk Infinite video, it had a couple of cards to help clear your side of the board. So it had a Carnage and it had a Viper. And both of those are good in theory. You can send over, you know, bad cards. You can clear out Shadowland locations. You can help clog the opponent's board. But with Arrow being in something like 20% of decks or 25% of decks or whatever that metric truly is, it doesn't feel as advantageous to clear a negative two power card from our side of the board versus keeping it to help make sure that we're protected against Arrow plays. Then in addition to that, with Thanos Leech being as common as it is, a lot of times if we are anticipating a Leech play, we can set up an Infinite. We can do an Infinite on 6, maybe even an Infinite on 6 and 7 if we set up the Magic play, if it falls just right. But we do have the ability to kind of benefit from the Leech in several ways. The Titania, the Demon from our Hood, the Infinites are all unaffected by that Leech play. And a lot of times just having a decent amount of power to follow up on it with could be enough to swing you those locations and those games. In this version of the deck, we did also slot in Scarlet Witch. Both of the changes that we made came as a recommendation from a comment in my last video. Scarlet Witch is a decent play to be able to change unadvantageous locations or locations that are good for your opponent. Every once in a while, you might set up a cheeky magic into a Scarlet Witch play where they think that you're going to skip on turn six into a big play. And then all of a sudden you pull it out from under them and you change the location. But Otherwise, the list runs incredibly well. It runs as well as it did. This is a very close version of what I used to hit infinite this season. And I think as the meta continues to shift and change, if we keep seeing Leech, having an infinite somewhere in your deck can help you pad against that. Because then all of a sudden they're giving you an advantage where they're hoping to give you a big disadvantage. If you want to see more of this deck or really any other deck that we showcase and some that we don't, Make sure to check us out live on twitch.tv slash tlsgsnap. We are probably live right now, so jump over there, check, and find out. And with the brief deck explanation out of the way, we are going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first up we have Cube with a little, a little emoji sad face. And they're running Thanos, so they're, I guess they're not too worried about donating their cubes. Um, we do have Hood in our starting hand. Our demon is going to be really good in that location. They play their Mind Stone, um, so they're going to have additional card draw. We have our Moon Girl to double down on some of our resources. I think we try to actively get rid of these cards in the front so that whenever we Moon Girl, we can make sure to copy our Demon. Maybe we top deck a She-Hulk next. Uh, maybe it's Titania. And so to do that, I think we're going to tempo play the Scarlet Witch. A lot of times I like to hold it so that you can try to maybe sneak the magic location, sneak the limbo lane away from the opponent and surprise them in that end game. However, since we want to duplicate what's at the tail end, I'm going to use these cards early. They did use the time stone, so they have four energy this turn and not and not three, but they didn't use the time stone next turn, so we don't have to worry about them ramping into an early leech. And so we're going to go ahead and push the Green Goblin into New York. Our aim is to fully cap that lane out so they can't move their Demon, their Lockjaw. They can't move those cards over into New York on turn six. Um, the Khazar is a decent one. It buffs up all of the one cost cards that are on their side of the board. If we draw into our Titania, maybe we don't end up going with, maybe we don't end up going with the Moon Girl this turn. Almost every single game with this She-Hulk Infinite combo, you want to go with Moon Girl on four so that you can skip and soak and uh, let your Sunspot do what he needs to do. But with this one, I don't think we're going to. Um, I think we're going to play the Titania and the Sunspot. That way it bounces back. We have our Demon, so we can play Moon Girl next turn. We have two Demons to help us swing this lane or help recall our Titania back. I'm going to go ahead and snap into it because we are fairly confident. Um, I mean, they do still have bigger cards. We could always do Shang-Chi in, in Monster Island, as well as one of the demons into New York to bring that Titania back. So they have the Mr. Fantastic. This is the kind of Spectrum ongoing version. So they probably have Valkyrie. They probably have uh, Spectrum somewhere hidden. They don't have any ongoing cards in this right lane, so we don't have to worry about that. We also don't have to worry about them recalling any of their any of their cards back, which is so funny to me. Do we skip, they drop initiative, and then we drop a 20 power infinite on them? We could drop it in this lane. Um, the, the Valkyrie could come down, but that would set all of their stuff to three here. I think we do that instead. 
if they happen to if they happen to leech, that's fine. We'd still infinite. Yeah, I think we're gonna soak here. We're gonna let them keep the Titania. The Titania is theirs. They do change the Washington DC lane into Kiln. They have that lane. So they have Kiln. We have New York. What is the ooh, the Thanos to just overkill the Kiln location is so satisfying. They do have initiative here, so we can just drop the Infinite as long as they can't beat uh, 29 power, which actually is looking less and less likely. So if the Spectrum comes down, that is a that is a five power play, six, seven, eight, nine, nine extra power in this lane that bumps them to 24. We're going to lock in the Infinite play. Um, I think a Spectrum probably comes down. Um, may, ooh, if it's a bl ooh, if it's a Blarvel, a blue Marvel could absolutely roll us and um, steal the New York location away from them. Uh, okay, no, the armor comes down, but that is not quite enough. We're not going with the Shang-Chi play line, my friend. We are going with the good old skip into an Infinite, and we are able to secure the win. Now, realistically, they didn't have any fantastic draw here. They probably had Blue Marvel, which could have swung it for them somewhere in their deck. They probably had a a Valkyrie somewhere, but Valkyrie wasn't going to do it in this lane. And this doesn't look like the version that runs Leech, but we are a little bit protected against Leech from like the Infinite, the Titania, the Demon, all are fairly unimpacted if they get Leeched or if they get early Leeched. All right, next up we have the Odinson from very early on in the beta days. We have the Odinson um, and he is rocking a Thanos list. Um, he's always been very good at running valued heavy decks, decks that are very consistent. And so uh, the Thanos decks make sense. Um, I don't like it, but I can respect it. We're going to play Sunspot. We're going to play Quinjet over to the left. Um, we have a pretty good... Ooh, so the Quinjet or the armor comes down, which protects the Fist Tower. So we're, we don't have to worry about an arrow into that location. And so now we do have our Green Goblin. We have our Moon Girl. And now we have our Magic as well. I almost think we Green Goblin into Shadowland instead of Necrotia. I don't think they do a whole lot more into Fist Tower. And I don't think they play into Necrotia this turn because it's going to be negative power for whatever, unless they have Reality Stone. And so I think we're just going to send them the Green Goblin in the Shadowland. Ooh, they do play into Necrotia. Do they have the Reality Stone? They do have the Reality Stone. Oh my gosh, that is a fantastic reality for us. We love the reality that we're looking at. I am sure that they would not agree. This also looks like kind of the ongoing version. So like a Spectrum could bump bump this up to five. But five, but five is not going to do it. Uh, let's go ahead and do our Moon Girl into Shadowland. That's going to give us the She-Hulk. We can then use magic on five. We can skip on six. We have two She-Hulks we can play. Or even if we just want to end the game on turn six, we can do that as well. Um, because they probably have a Valkyrie somewhere. They ooh, they ramp up. They can do a six cost card here. So I'm curious what they're going to be running. The Scarlet the Scarlet Witch could be fun, right? Could we? I mean, we have we're in a really good spot. I don't know that we need to do the the old. I don't know that we need to do this old switcheroo, but it is a possibility. Thanos comes down in the Shadowland, so we don't want to change that one back with like a Scarlet Witch, because um, then we would just be losing in that lane. Actually, right now we would be tied in it. So since the Reality Stone's already on the board, I'm going to skip here. Um, it might, I don't know. I, I don't think they run a, a secondary way to change the value of cards. So right now they have initiative. There's not a lot that they can do to change that without completely capping out one of their lanes. And even then it'd be a ghost and that's not very likely in, in most decks. And so unless they have a way to bamboozle the, the Limbo lane, we should be fine. Okay, so they do skip there as well. They do still keep initiative. We have the She-Hulk, the Shang chi the She-Hulk, and for, for Giggles and for extra float, we're going to do something like an armor. I would do Scarlet Witch, but it could turn it into Bar With No Name and lose us the game. I'm not going to risk that. And so this protects us from any kind of arrow plays, and we should have the very comfy, very easy win. And so... That's two in a row that we're going against Thanos and two in a row that it's the ongoing version, which I think is the weaker of the versions. So it's surprising that we're seeing that a couple of times. Let's go ahead and take our one cube and we'll jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have sorry. And if they're truly sorry, maybe they'll give us a few cubes. 
We're gonna go ahead and start with our hood. We do draw into our sunspot or we top deck into our sunspot on turn one. Um, we can play that and start soaking. We do have the Scarlet Witch to eventually change one of the locations if we need to. I'm gonna hold Titania and Demon for now until we get a better idea of what direction we wanna go. If we draw into our Green Goblin, we can do Green Goblin Titania, my favorite play line in the game. Um, and then they play Zabu, so they uh, they could be running a Hawk deck. And if so, the Lechugia is very beneficial for them. They, we do have Moon Girl now, but I think we're just gonna I think we're gonna drop the Scarlet Witch early. Um, I think we're gonna change the Lechugia. I don't care for that location. Um, and if we ended up skipping and soaking, Moon Girl is only gonna copy a few of our cards. We want to clear it up as much as we possibly can. The Killmonger. So the Zabu, the Killmonger. This looks like a, maybe a Sarah tech deck um, that runs the Zabu so that for, for consistency. So it may be running a couple of other... Oh, wow. The Scarlet Witch changes the far right location into Limbo. Interestingly enough, we're okay with Limbo in general. Now, both of these cards are under nine. They can't be Shang-Chi'd. Um, they, they may be running like the Toxic Sarah list with the Zabu. They could be running just a normal Sarah, Sarah deck. Okay, so it's, uh, it's more of a... A Sarah Tech deck that runs the Hawk, I guess. And so changing the Lechugia turns out that it was the right call. They are keeping all of their cards under here under nine. I think they're paying very close attention to make sure that they don't push it up over that uh, that level that would be able to be Shang Chi. Um, but knowing that, knowing that they might not play another card here, I'm gonna do Titania, and then we're gonna do our armor. Um, that's gonna if they don't play here, that's going to cap out that middle location. And then all we have to worry about from there is how to win the other one. Not if they play an arrow, of course. Uh, well, our Titania did not do what we wanted Titania to do. Uh, we get magic. We have one additional turn. Let's uh, round number. Let's do round number two. Let's try for it. We're going to try for... <laughs> going to try again. If at first you don't succeed, uh, try until you can't try anymore and then you have to retreat. So, okay, oh my lord, have a mercy. The Odin play? No way. Why do they have Odin in this? Sorry, I can I can tell from uh, the way you're behaving, sorry, that you are most in in most definitely not sorry at all. Ah, oh, dang. We got arrowed twice. It feels bad, but we're only going to lose one cube. Let's get out of here. All right. Next up, we have Owen Lee. The first location is Mojo World. So I'm not going to play our Quinjet on the off chance that they do have a Killmonger, which I think Killmonger should probably start creeping back up into a lot of different decks because there are a lot of people that are running Sunspot, a lot of Thanos stones that can help you swing that game. It's not going to be the only thing that, that wins it. Like, just having Killmonger by himself won't win you the game. You'll need other solid value. But I do think he is in a spot where he could see a decent amount of play. I'm going to go ahead and just play our Sunspot to the right. Um, I don't know what that location is. We have the ability to change it with Scarlet Witch, but we don't want to play into the Warrior's Fall location necessarily. Vormir is an interesting one. We also don't want to send them Green Goblin in Mojo World. And if I remember right, the green the Goblin counts as a card played on their end, I want to say. I know we have armor that we could use to protect whatever they whatever was being destroyed. That doesn't feel great. Let's do the Scarlet Witch in mid. We're still trying to get a feel for what they're running. We're just playing our stuff out. We're playing our hand. The Thor. So it could be a Lockjaw rotation deck where they aim to just rotate into just some phenomenal value cards we have our moon girl we have our infinite i don't think we get any value from doubling down on anything that we have right now let's play the green goblin into fisk tower next turn we might just let sunspot soak depending on what we top deck into um if we let sunspot soak then we could play our infinite on turn six but really oh the the jubilee into mjolnir is one of the reasons I dropped uh, Jubilee from my Lockjaw rotation list is because you can get some bad pulls, and if it rotates into it... Ooh. Had we had She-Hulk a turn earlier, that would have been phenomenal. Um, let's let... Let's let... Let's let him soak. We're gonna let him cook. 
Our Sunspot's going to soak some, arm, some energy. They do pull their Wasp out, so they go from 5 to 6. All they pull out is a Wasp. Does this list run Arrow? I think it does. And if they can't beat us in Vormir, do we act like we were going to go, oh, but then it comes down to a question of where do they play their Arrow? Uh, I guess we could just do something like this. They use Arrow over here, expecting us to not be able to play and cap out the lane, then we should be fine. If they play for mid, we might be fine, but we all, might also lose it. So I think it comes down to a gut read and wondering whether they're going to play arrow or not. Let's do this. Um, they could also arrow into the far right. The arrow mid was the right call, but I don't think it gets the result that we wanted. They have 13 power there. We have the negative two from the hood. We have the three coming back from the armor. So if they soaked any at all, they would win. Oh my gosh, we do end up sealing in the win. Very, very close game. Always great matches against Owen Lee. That was a close one. We are going to go ahead and take our win. Let's jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have good old Texter. The first location is Tinker's Workshop. We get an extra energy. We could Scarlet Witch early. I think we're going to wait. We have Moon Girl. We have Magic. We might angle to use the Scarlet Witch to take away the Limbo location and then just kind of surprise them with, ooh, but we do get our She-Hulk. So now our Moon Girl value is looking much, much better. We have the Demon, we have the She-Hulk. We have some really big key cards that we want to have in our hand going into that last turn. And knowing that they're not running a Thanos list, the Reality Stone, the ability for them to change the Limbo, loca limbo location, I think is a little bit more difficult for them. So let's, let's play our Sunspot to the right. We're going to hold our Demon. Next turn, we will Moon Girl. Should be able to duplicate the Demon, the She-Hulk, and of course, Magic. And then we can Magic on 5, skip on 6, into flo flooding the Infinite, the two She-Hulks, and the Demon onto the board. So we will get a really good return for our investment here. Let's do the Moon Girl. As long as they don't have a leech, which maybe they do. Maybe Oh, the Shuri. It's going to be interesting to see if we can outpower the Shuri play. Um, we might need to draw into our Shang-Chi to be able to do it, but we will see. Let's go with the magic play. They probably go with Red Skull. Yeah, Red Skull, and then they will have Taskmaster. This looks like the KM Best version that dropped the Arnim Zola. So I think this is a little bit less flexible. They do have Arrow, or they should have Arrow. But as long as they don't have a way to change Limbo, we can skip here and we have a lot of cards we can play on the board. So I don't think we're as susceptible to an arrow counterplay as a lot of other decks. And I don't think they have, I mean, they've played two cards here. They don't have the Arnim Zola. They do go with the Taskmaster. And so they have massive power in the left, uh, massive power in mid, but can we beat it? So the 20 power, the 30 power does not do it for us in the left lane. So I think we need to use the left lane as a bait lane. So something where we just fill it up with like Demon and Titania, our lower power plays. That way we can focus, because that would be, if I was them, that would be where I arrow into, would be the left lane. And so then from there, we could do the 20 power, which brings us up to 31, which will get us over that edge. Um, and then I think we need to lean into a She-Hulk, and I'm going to put another one in mid, just in case they try to pad that with a little bit more power. I think we're okay. Now, where we might alter is if they decide to arrow to the right and they gamble. They gamble on what it pulls over and the fact that we might not be able to beat the power that they have in the left lane. I think is the only... Which they might. Against the Shang-Chi, they might tighten to the right. Do we change our call? We're going to change our call. Demon, Titan... Uh, demon, uh, She-Hulk, uh, Titania, Demon, Demon... Uh, we don't, oh, we could get one extra power from the Titania, but um, we choked and we reordered it wrong. I think they're going to arrow to the right instead. Uh, I changed my mind and the Cosmo to the left is fine. The She-Hulk in the right lane, is that fine? I think it is. The She-Hulk, the Demon, the Titania, it didn't matter that we choked and we could have had one extra power out on the board. We do bump up to 45 in Limbo. We bump up to 30 in Titan. We're able to dethrone the Shuri Queen. So they didn't have the arrow after all. It didn't necessarily matter where we ordered our cards, but I am glad that we situated them how we did. That one feels good. Let's go ahead and take the two cubes.